me. This is a regular meeting of the City Council and WPCA. Um, I will jump right into the meeting with item number one on the agenda, which is um, a vote to approve the minutes of the regular meeting, which was held on April 6th. Do I have a motion? So moved. I'll second. Councilman Rubino. Oh, and I forgot to mention, uh, this is being recorded for us. So if, before you make any motions or comments, if you could just state your name for the record. Rubino, uh, move it. Thank you, Councilman Rubino. Seconded by Councilwoman Rouet. Questions on the minutes? No. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any Aye. opposed? Motion carries. Item two on the agenda is um, a fair housing resolution. This is something that we do annually. I'll entertain a motion to adopt resolution number 143. Dash two, I'm sorry, I'm getting a few people feedback here. Publicly endorsing the right of all people to full and equal housing opportunities in the neighborhood of their choice. Do I have a motion? Drake, Drake, okay. unmute yourself. So I have a motion by Councilman Cavanero. Do I have a second? I'll second. And a council, uh, second. Oh, Ruth All right, are there questions on this motion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item three, I'll entertain a motion to accept the recommendation of the services of the Elderly Commission and Elderly Services Director to authorize the mayor to apply for assisted transportation program DOT section 5310 grant and approve the purchase of a wheelchair accessible van with an expected maximum cost of $59,822 as described in Joel Sikorsky's memo dated April 7th, 2020. Move three. Waldron. Rubino second. Okay, so uh, Councilman Waldron moved it. Councilman Rubino seconded. Um, Joel, I know that you're on. Did you wanna talk a little bit about this one? He's on. There he goes. Yeah. Um, this is this was applied for last spring and approved this fall. I was delinquent in getting the approvals for the signature for procurement. Um, we were fortunate because procurement um, they didn't do any of it. It's usually done in person because we're buying the exact van uh, that we got last year. We're going to have the same Ford Transit, and we were able to fast track that and push it right through. So we should be at the head of the line, especially with uh, all the delays in the factories and things yeah. that we're doing now. So um, it's a really nice Ford Transit van, eight people, lift assist, uh, great on gas. And the one that we got last year is working out superb so far. So thank you all. All right. Are there any questions for Joel or any questions on the motion? All right, then I'll call the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Item four, I'll entertain a motion to accept the recommendation of the senior center director and purchasing agent to waive the city's bid process and award the contract for carpet replacement at the Sullivan Senior Center to Bartholomew Contract Interiors, BCI, of Hartford for $14,617.28. This is off of the state contract number 12. PSX 0307. Move four, Waldron. Thank you, Councilman Waldron. Aye, second. Oh, good. Th you thank you. Into your Zoom account with an unregistered email. You want Councilwoman uh, Wagner seconded. Um, are there questions on this motion? And then once you sign up, go to the Seeing and hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. All right, number five, I'll entertain a motion. In accordance with Governor Lamont's executive order 7I to authorize the Board of Finance to adopt a budget and set a mill rate without holding a public hearing as required under Torrington City Charter Section C13-3B. Move five, Waldron. Thank you, Councilman Waldron. Second, Kevin Arrow. Thank you, Councilman Kevin Arrow. Um, so I'll just do a little explaining on what we're um, proposing here. Uh, there is a requirement 10 days prior to setting um, the mill rate 
that there be held a public hearing. Um, under the circumstances, we're not sure that we can fulfill that obligation. Our plan is to continue to move through our budget process in accordance with our charter driven timeline. Um, so if we reach that point and we find that it is impossible to do a public hearing, uh, the, the goal would be to uh, allow the Board of Finance to proceed without that hearing. Questions? Well, if my facial expression says it, um, it is concerning not to have the public hearing. I understand we're, you know, in unprecedented time. <coughs> That's just the cough, no, nothing else. That's not COVID. Yeah. Um, 14 uh, days. I'm, 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 I am concerned um, about supporting this motion um, for that reason. You know, understand. Like, yeah. Public comment is so important, particularly if we're setting a mill rate and if we're not increasing the mill rate, it probably wouldn't be an issue. And I'm hoping that will be the case. So, um, but if there's any um, proposed increase in that mill rate, I think it really deserves some public comment, if not uh, by Zoom, um, but at least by written uh, communication from the public. Agreed. Urbino. I agree, Wagner. Um, I also, I, I agree with Ann. Um, I think, you know, if we had those high hopes of reducing the mill rate, if we can come in even a smidge less, it might be a little bit more palatable, but I am concerned about the lack of public input. So I'll talk a little bit about the process. I, I had something printed out just so they can run down it with, um, out, without relying on my memory. So the process that we'll be using in doing this, because I agree with everybody, I'm not keen on doing any budget adoption without public input. So my thought process is tomorrow night, the Board of Finance meets, it's its regular Board of Finance meeting. Um, and what I would propose to them is that we move to the joint meeting with the Board of Education and the Board of Finance. Um, uh, and uh, in advance of that meeting, in accordance with all of the governor's uh, orders under section, uh, it was executive order 7B, that the budget must be posted on the city website with notice to all of the public, and we will promote this through the newspapers, through the website, uh, through email, that um, we will accept public comment much in the way uh, this council received public comment this evening, um, that the Board of Finance will be able to receive public comment electronically uh, or, by, or by mail, mail to the city <coughs> clerk's office. Um, and in advance of that joint meeting with the Board of Education, um, have some, some uh, semblance of a public process. Uh, shortly after that meeting, what we would do is move to the May 19th meeting, which is um, again the regular meeting of the Board of Finance, at which point both the city department budgets would be posted on the website and the Board of Education, again soliciting public input. So there'll be two attempts to receive public comment on the budget. Um, and if we are not lifted from the restrictions uh, under an executive order, proceed without um, public hearing to go ahead and adopt a budget and set the mill rate. Any reductions in the city's budget would come right back to the city council for the city council to approve. Um, so that is, that's essentially the process we were looking at. I think it sounds fair, Ms. Wagner. Thank you. Other questions or comments about it? I know that there are other municipalities that are doing this. Um, it is, you know, designed to be as transparent as we can. Um, that joint meeting is again um, open, just like this one. Anybody can dial into this one. They can participate not participate, they can observe, but just like any other joint meeting that we've had with the Board of Education and Board of Finance, 
um, or with the, at the Board of Finance level um, on budget adoption and mill rate, um, the uh, public is present, just not commenting during the meeting. I don't have any other questions, thank you. All right. Any other questions or comments? Uh, I did share this with um, Board of Education last week. They were inquiring as to what that process would look like for obvious reasons. They also wanna make sure that their parents, their uh, teachers have an opportunity to speak to the budget. They've actually proceeded with all of their budget approval process um, through this um, uh, Zoom or e-meetings as well. Um, so it's, um, it's not, it's not pretty, but it's progress. Mike, if there are no other times. Yeah. What do you want my two cents? I do. Um, I think, I think this is beyond fair. I think it is, um, the only common sense approach to this problem. Uh, we are on a quasi wartime footing in terms of how we have to restrict uh, all kinds of normal functions uh, within private sector and public sector. And this is about the only practical way to get this done. And I would also, I would also like to note that a budget process is usually the culmination of a year's worth of meetings by all kinds of committees, councils, mayors, and lead, civic leaders at which during which the public is always by statute invited to attend, comment, and input. And those of us who ultimately are responsible for making the final decision know all too well that throughout the year, we are lucky if we get more than 10 to 15 people coming to our city council meetings to input to our process. So I would assume that the process that you have um, come up with, that is the only practical process for getting this done, will be uh, utilized by those same responsible citizens who attend our meetings throughout the year and their input will be taken under consideration and um, the city will move on. So I totally support this. Thank you. Also may submit exhibits. Yeah. So no, thank you for those. And um, Attorney Michelle is reminding me that not only is the public um, allowed to submit comment on the budget, but they can also submit exhibits if there's anything that they felt we should we should be looking for. Sure. So, um, all right, if there are any other questions or comments, I'll go ahead and call the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any, any opposed? None. Excellent. Thank you. All right. So um, item six on this agenda is again, in response to um, some of the, uh, some of Governor Lamont's executive orders that have been coming down uh, in response to not only um, the need to respond to the health crisis, but also recognizing that there's also um, a economic or fiscal crisis. Um, so this motion that I'd be looking at, uh, looking for is to participate in the tax deferment program as set forth in governor's executive order 7s as amended by executive order 7w requiring municipalities to offer to eligible taxpayers businesses nonprofits and residents a deferment by 90 days of any taxes on real property personal property or motor vehicles and municipal sewer user fees from the time that said tax or user fee becomes due and payable and to notify the Connecticut Office of Policy and Management of the same. Do you have a motion? This is Ann, I'll approve it or I'll move it. Thank you. Rubino second. Thank you, Councilman Rubino. All right, um, Lana, uh, Gosley, our tax collector, is on the line. Lana, did you want to, I know that you wanted to um, uh, represent for TTC LLC on this one? Yes. Can you hear me? I can. Can everybody else? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Okay. okay. Go ahead. Yep. So I just 
Right. So I just um, we prepared a statement that I just wanted to present, um, Madam Mayor and honorable council members. You know, I wanted to thank you for the opportunity to present a few comments during this unprecedented COVID-19 crisis. Uh, Torrington Tax Collector, also known as TTC, values the productive and cooperative relationship that it has developed with the city's taxpayers, officials, and staff. Over the past five years, TTC and its staff, you know, including myself, of course, have worked tirelessly to establish effective communication, transparency, and the best possible customer service to city taxpayers, officials, and staff. It is on this basis that I deliver our observations on the proposed tax relief program that will be offered by the city to taxpayers during this COVID-19 crisis. The executive orders numbers 7S uh, part number 6 and 7W part number 1, which was just an amendment to the definition of what a municipality is, that Governor Lamont issued recognize a need to provide as much taxpayer relief as could be achieved without material service compromises by allowing each municipality to make an election from two different tax relief program alternatives. The mayor, corporation council, and TTC, including myself, discussed each possible tax relief program. These discussions, including pros and cons, impact on taxpayers, you know, the impact on city services and comparative costs. After careful consideration and discussion by all participants, the mayor, with TTC's concurrence, is recommending the tax deferment program to the city council for approval, which is the um, motion that the mayor just read. Despite the administrative and logistical burdens that will be placed on all participants, including taxpayers, City staff and T um, TTC staff, TTC endorses the mayor's recommendation, recommendation for the tax deferment program. TTC wishes to reaffirm its commitment to providing the best possible tax collection and services to city taxpayers, officials, and staff. Please note that TTC will be working hard with the city administration to determine ways to make the process for applying and processing the tax deferral program as safe, easy, and efficient for taxpayers. If any taxpayers have questions or need any assistance with applying to the tax deferral program, we encourage taxpayers to go to the city's website at www.torringtonct.org or the tax collectors or mayor's Facebook page for more information. The answers to frequently asked questions about the tax deferral program will be available as well online. You know, again, please do not hesitate to contact the tax collector or my staff, I mean, obviously, via email at taxcollector at torringtonct.org or by phone at 860-489-2209. I want to thank you for the opportunity to express our dedication to fulfilling our responsibilities, and we look forward to working with city taxpayers, officials, and staff during these trying times. You know, so if you have any questions, I have been um, closely working with the Office of Policy and Management in, you know, interpreting the executive order, um, sending out, you know, guidance as to what certain parts of it mean, if, you know, um, different tax collectors across the state have all questions, and so we have a frequently asked question um, She out there. We're actually having another conference call. All of the tax collectors in the state or whoever wants to participate with the Office of Policy and Management on Wednesday in the morning. So um, I'm here you know, to answer any questions. So, um, and before I open the floor for questions, I just want to add a little bit to what Lana just read. Um, this, none of, neither of the programs that were offered are easy. I think they are logistical nightmares um, for um, uh, implementation. Um, they're going to create more paperwork. They're going to require a considerable amount of time, um, not only to um, get the message out, but also to receive those applications back. Um, uh, obviously what we're trying to do is get the best benefit to the, t to the eligible taxpayers, those taxpayers that need it the most. 
um, the tax deferment program appeared to do that um, for the city of Torrington. We did quite a bit of research on what the impact, both the economic impact um, and the, um, uh, the uh, ease of implementation would be for our taxpayers. Um, and that's the reason we lighted on this particular program versus the, uh, the low interest. Um, it's a little complicated for us because we're the only municipality in the state that has a private tax collector. Um, so to say that we have um, had a great working relationship with this tax collector in working our way through this and the impact that it has on their office is an understatement. Um, all of the TTC um, principals were available, Lana was available. Um, I made phone calls out to OPM to make sure that I clearly understood how complicated this could be or would be. Um, they were highly complimentary of um, Lana, uh, particularly, I think it was Jessica Glothier, who yes. said that Lana um, did um, work with them on making sure that this language was very easy for everybody to understand and read. Uh, the application is not terribly complicated, but it's also not in Spanish, so we have to make sure that it's available to our Spanish-speaking public. Um, so there is still quite a bit of work to do, but uh, on the municipal side, we are committed to working with Lana's office to make this as easy as possible because the application period is from now until July 1st. And that's the same period of time that we're looking at budget adaption and the same period of time that Lana and her staff are customarily getting tax bills out to the taxpayers. So um, it's quite a bit of work ahead of us. Every municipality in, this, in the state was required to select one of these programs. Um, and I, again, just reflecting on 2016 when we went through this with motor vehicle taxes and how cooperative um, TTC was with the city of Torrington, I have to say again, how grateful I am to have such a cooperative um, relationship with this tax collector. Questions? No questions? No. Excellent. I'll move. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item seven, we're still sort of in the same topic of um, discussion. So um, if Lana is still on the phone, I'll ask her to hang on the phone for a little bit more. Um, yeah. So um, the next item on the agenda is um, a, I'll enter in motion, entertain a motion to authorize a modification of paragraph three of the tax collector service agreement to allow the tax collector to fulfill its obligation of the final settlement of the first installment of the total taxes and sewer use fees on the rate books, which would customarily be due on November, on the first Monday. Monday of November 2020 to be extended to the first Monday in January 2021. Um, obviously, you can see where we're going with this. When we extend the grace period from July 1st to October 1st for taxpayers who pay their taxes, um, obviously, the um, trickle down effect of that is the tax collector's ability to, um, to fulfill its obligation and final settlement on November 1st. Do I have a motion? This is so Rowan, moved. and I'll move it. Second. Okay. Second. Woman, Councilwoman Rouette moved, Councilman Waldron seconded. Are there questions? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Item eight, I'll entertain a motion to credit TTC LLC in an amount not to exceed $40,000 as compensation for its loss of interest attributable to the deferment program required by Governor Lamont's Executive Order 7S, which amount shall be used to reduce the balance due by TTC to the city for the first installment of total taxes and sewer fees on the 10-1-2019 grand list on or before the first Monday of January, 2021. Do I have a motion? So moved. Moved. I, I heard Councilman Waldron. Do I have a second? Rubino, second. 
Thank you, Councilman Rubino. Seconded. Questions? Uh, only, uh, how did you come up? This is Rubino, Councilman Rubino. How did you come up with the 40 grand? So um, I'll, I'll tell you what we, um, what our process was, and then Lana can speak to the numbers. So what, um, one of the benefits of um, working not only with Lana, but with um, the tax collection software is they can extrapolate the um, numbers and what, what the interest is that they receive um, within any period of time, and even uh, refine it so that the interest they can parse out the interest that's actually paid against the particular installment. So, um, so TTC LLC did that for us. We also looked at um, this particular order um, does not apply to any of our um, taxpayers who are paying their taxes through um, an escrow with their mortgage company. So um, with all of that data, looking at some historical data, um, Lana, I think provided us two years in a look back period. Um, and then factoring in the, um, the fact that we're only looking at those eligible taxpayers, not offering this to every single taxpayer. Um, TTC worked with us um, in trying to come to a, a, a number that wasn't reflective of all 90 days, um, recognizing the hardship that this creates, not only for the city, but um, you know, for their losses. Um, and uh, we came up with um, what was occurring over the last couple of years in a 60 day period of time. Um, these are the kinds of things that I greatly appreciate working with this um, tax collector um, because they, again, have stepped up to the plate for the taxpayers of, of the city of Torrington as they did three years ago in 2016 when we had the same problem with our motor vehicle taxes. Loss may be greater than Yeah, we don't know what these okay. losses will be. We don't know who's going to wait all 90 days to pay those taxes. Um, they may be greater than this amount, um, but um, TTC did agree that, um, that they were as interested in preserving the, um, or mitigating the impact on our um, taxpayers as they were trying to work with us. I don't know if there's anything you wanted to add, Lana. No, no, that's it. I, I'm You're good? good with that. You don't want, yeah. okay. If you want me to say anything, I can, I'm here still. Okay. Any other questions or? Not fair. Okay. okay, more than fair. I will be honest with you. We do, we yeah. do feel mm -hmm. they've been uh, as I said, once again, stepped up to the plate for the uh, taxpayers of the city of Torrington, and we are tremendously grateful. Yep. So if there are no questions, I'll move this. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. All right, item nine on the agenda. I'll entertain a motion to accept Corporation Council's recommendation and authorize the mayor pursuant to CGS section 12-179 to release the liens described in Attorney Dell's memo dated April 20th, 2020. So moved, Waldron. Thank you. Councilman Waldron, do I have a second? Second, Wagner. Thank you, Councilwoman Wagner. Uh, questions on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 10, I'll entertain a motion to accept the recommendations of the tax collector and authorize the 14 tax refunds indicated on the list dated April 20th, 2020. Rouette, I'll move it. Thank you, Councilwoman Rouette. Second, Waldron. Thank you, Councilman Waldron. Um, questions on this motion? No. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 11, I'll entertain a motion um, acting here and as a WPCA to accept the recommendation of the tax collector and authorize the sewer user refunds indicated in the list dated April 20th, 2020. So moved, Waldron. Thank, Thank you, Councilman Moore. Thank you, Councilman Kevin Earl. Questions on this motion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 12. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to consider business by department heads. So moved, Waldron. Thank you, Councilman Waldron. Second, Second Rouette. Right. Thank you, Councilwoman Rouette. Um, 
All in favor. Aye. 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 Any opposed? We're open. Um, department heads, I see Carol Anderson is on. Did you want to add anything, Carol? No, thank you, Mayor. Nothing new tonight. All right. Um, I don't, Joel, um, you're still on. Was there anything else you wanted to add this evening? No, all set, Mayor. Thank you all. Okay, thank you. Um, Chief Tally is on. Chief, do you want to give us a little update on um, how things are going with our response team? Yeah, so um, I think we have a strong response team in place. We continue to work to uh, in, you know, encourage those community mitigation measures to uh, slow the spread of the COVID-19 virus. Um, we are up over 200 cases within Torrington as of today. Um, we continue to see an impact, but there are some positive signs that, you know, these efforts are definitely having an impact, but we still probably have a little little ways to go. So, um, you know, we're still working to encourage that social distancing. I'm sure everyone is aware of the, the new executive order requiring face coverings if you're going to be within six feet of public, uh, six feet of others in public or your, or your workplace. Um, and that, that'll start at eight o'clock tonight. Um, you know, so we're continuing the messaging. We do have the variable sign message board up just sort of doing some public outreach. It's going to be moved around to different areas in the city. Um, we're keeping a close eye and, and working, coordinating with the, the hospital and our long-term care facilities and, and Torrington Area Health and all the stakeholders. Um, it does seem we have all the right actions in place. It's just a matter of really holding the course at this point and, and keeping uh, keeping village vigilant uh, these next next couple of days. Um, did want to just offer a, a sincere thanks for all the support and, and well wishes we were able to do. Uh, parades of support for our long-term care workers and, and the, hot, the workers up at Charlotte Hungerford Hospital, um, which I know had a, a profound impact on, on those workers that have really been encountering yeah. trying times. Um, and I know for, for my personnel that and the Chief Baldwin's personnel, it had a, had a great impact for us as well. So um, I don't know if there's anything else you'd want me to add, Mayor? Um. No, I think that you've covered it. I, um, I'm not, I know that the council has heard us speak a number of times. Um, these meetings that we have that Chief Tawi organizes um, and, um, and facilitates include the Torrington Area Health District, Charlotte Hungerford Hospital, um, the schools, um, department heads, including our senior center, um, uh, there's our uh, regional emergency. Never know what. What is the full name of our emergency um, response? It's REPT. Yeah, regional emergency response team. Yeah, the um, you know, and then of course there's the two or three times a week um, conference calls with the governor's office, with Department of Public Health, um, with DAS. Um, so this has really been all-consuming for Chief Towie um, and um, and our staff here, um, and I can't I can't thank Chief Towie enough and everybody else that's been um, giving this 110 percent because it has been a challenge for all of us. And if anyone has a chance to see the video that the um, police department has up on their Facebook page showing what that parade for heroes looks like. Um, it is very touching and it is just a great reminder of why I'm so proud of this community and I'm so happy to continue to live in the community that I grew up in. So questions from anybody on anything that's going on? Just a, a comment that, you know, um, you're in your first year as chief, as uh, well as Chief Baldwin and um, who would have known that you would have had this challenge. The rest of your year should be so easy for you, Chief. <laughs> I, I, I hope so. I, I will say just to echo on everyone's comments, um, it, it is great. it's not me or any one individual. It really is a phenomenal team, a phenomenal community. Um, this is an emergency that has touched all departments in the city, and I think the department heads and, and all the employees have done a great job sort of stepping up to the challenge and the community at large. I think um, the outreach, the support, um, I think that Torrington's gonna be strong coming out of this because of all the efforts of the community. Um, and, and I am hoping that 
this is a once in a lifetime experience for me. So yeah, it makes budget <laughs> seem easy, <It's> right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I would like to add something myself, Sharon Wagner. Sure, sure. Um, I was privileged to be at the Board of Public Safety meeting on February 3rd, and I have to tell you, given what I have seen in other communities, I am so proud of our Torrington Area Board of Health and Chief Tolway, Chief Baldwin, our firefighters and police for all of the pre-work that they did to prepare us for this. I think we have a much better grasp on what's going on, and and uh, I know that personally, I appreciate it tremendously. As do most of my neighbors who have talked about it all the time. So thank you very much. Thank you, Sharon. All right, I don't see any other department heads on, so we'll move into item number thirteen. I'll entertain a motion to consider business by mayor and members. So moved, Waldron. Thank you, Councilman Waldron. Uh, second. Second. <laughs> Thank you, Councilwoman Ruitt. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I think last time I um, forgot Dave Oliver, so I hope that's not why he's not on the clock today. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'll start with Councilman Cavanero. Uh, nothing tonight, today, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Waldron? Uh, just everybody stay safe and healthy. Maybe if we can get through this the next month, we can get back to some kind of normal. So thanks to everybody in the city for what they do. Thank you. Councilman Rubino. Uh, ditto what Drake just said. Uh, kudos to our emergency management team and to police and fire. Um, as Willie to see a couple of them over the weekend and uh, thank them. Um, if you're seeing them around, thank them. Uh, they're out there every day. So we really appreciate it. Thank you all, especially the mayor and everybody that's still working very hard, Carol. Everybody, I just see your face, Carol. That's why I say Carol. <laughs> <laughs> and Vic, I know you're in the background, you too, for being out there. Thank right. you, everybody. All right, Councilwoman Rouette. Oh, you're saving the best for the last. Oh, I think it? I have woman Wagner too. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So, um, Mayor, I do have a couple words. Um, as you've probably all received from Jonathan Draper, our assistant city clerk, a um, sort of a, a few uh, letters regarding the solar project that's being proposed by Virigy Energy on East Pearl Road. Um, I know the mayor way in advance had has had some very preliminary conversations with this energy group and um, you know, had been promised um, that the community, the neighbors would actually uh, receive some information. Um, and as you know, Mayor, and, um, and I know you're sensitive to this, but the community has not received um, any information. We had one very small uh, Zoom meeting um, with the company, uh, just as a summary of the project, but we're certainly, um, and I say we because I live in the neighborhood, I'm very concerned about um, the potential proposed um, solar uh, project on East Pearl. Um, and I think you've gotten a few communications. I know the city doesn't have a major role in this. This is really the Connecticut Siting Council, but we're all learning through this process uh, what's next, but I would like to see if it's a possibility to have as a discussion at the next council meeting. Um, and if we could have that on the agenda so all the council's understanding and the community unfortunately probably won't be able to speak um, because of the um, um, Zoom meeting. But I know that they will be writing and they're very interested. So, and Mayor, I appreciate your support on this. Absolutely. Yeah, um, uh, just just to um, uh, add to what Councilwoman Rouette is speaking about, this um, solar array that is being proposed um, is being proposed on property owned by the Archdiocese of Hartford on East Pearl Road. Um, there are a number of factors that need to happen before they can move forward with this project. Um, starting last November when Verigi first contacted the city and said that they were uh, in negotiations with uh, the Archdiocese 
um, for the land. Uh, we told them that this would not happen without a public process. Um, as Councilwoman Rouette just shared, there has been no public process at all yet. So um, far from uh, moving this forward, but we will definitely make sure that this is on an agenda so that I can share with you all that we know um, and what that process looks like. So um, thank you. Thank Appreciate you. It. And Councilwoman um, Wagner. I just want to thank you, Mayor, for all of your extra work this year. This has been so totally unexpected, and your agenda is always full. I also would like to thank Jonathan for all his efforts on my behalf and others as we do the Zoom meetings, and to all of the City Hall staff for their display on the front lawn. I think it was much appreciated by everyone, so thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, you know, I just wanted to add one more thing. Um, as these executive orders um, come down the, you know, down the, the pike, um, I'm relying on Vic Michelle, who's been, you know, reading through them and helping us decide what is our next step as a municipality. You know, what boards do we need to pull in to make sure that this work is, is being done? Um, so starting back um, early uh, in, in March, the governor issued an executive order identifying an extension of time for boards of assessment appeals to be able to complete their work. Um, and in that order, they, uh, the governor neglected to um, cite or waive any of the requirements under uh, section 12-113, which is um, the ability to proceed with appellant hearings without requiring the appellant to appear in person. So um, a couple of weeks ago through Chief Towie's assistance, we were able to get uh, the governor to um, clarify that um, executive order. And on Friday, Attorney Michelle, myself, our assessor, uh, George Newjame and um, Diane Holland, who are um, the chairman and Secretary of the Board of Assessment Appeals were able to put our heads together to identify a way for them to move forward with the 150 applications that they have to hear um, telephonically or in person if somebody um, truly desires to be in person um, and how to move any of those very large pieces of property with a value of over a over million dollars um, off of their docket so, um, so that those appellants can move right to uh, the appeal directly to the Superior Court. Um, so I do just want to give a shout out to the Board of Assessment Appeals because um, they have yeoman's work ahead of them um, and to be able to pivot the way that they've had to pivot these last several weeks is remarkable. Um, and I just, I did feel that you should be aware of that. Um, so we'll be working with them over the next couple of weeks to set up safe ways for them to um, hear all of those appeals. So if there's any questions on that, if not, I guess there's no further business before the board. So I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved, Waldron. Thank you, Councilman Waldron. Second, Wagner. Thank you, Councilman Wagner. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? We're adjourned. Thank you all. Be safe. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. 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 You too. Right. Safe all. Good night. Thanks, John. No problem. Good night.